Hey, Terry here with Ultimate Outdoors Radio. We are on a little adventure out to uh, Devil's Lake, uh, North Dakota. So we had the chance today to jump in the boat with Johnny Candle. Johnny, good to uh, see you again, be back in the boat. Always Paul fun. Smith from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel is joining us, and uh, we're doing a little uh, little uh, report on Devil's Lake and uh, how great of a fishery, and uh, we're going to be doing a little duck hunting. So, Johnny, we had a chance to chat, uh, you and I and Paul, on the way out, and uh, Devil's Lake's a pretty interesting lake. And we talked about, so when did the water actually start rising at Devil's Lake? It was a mid to late 90s when... Uh, the oh my moment happened where <laughs> the water would come up a little bit, come up a little bit, and then it really started to shoot up yep. uh, again in that mid to late 90s where we're seeing two, three, four feet of rise in a spring. And when you're looking at a body of water right now that's 180,000 acres, when she comes up two or three feet at a shot, that's a lot of water. So as uh, Paul was photographing combines, and Johnny says we should move, we might hit the stack of the combine under the water. But <laughs> Paul, there's the photography opportunities is tremendous. Well, it's a, a unique fishery from so many different perspectives, and the one is that you see these flooded farmsteads and uh, stands of trees that are just standing dead now, and uh, you have an opportunity to fish man-made structure, like yeah. old uh, roads and uh, culverts and even combines, so we, uh, it's uh, really an interesting place to come. The fishery, too, Johnny, is uh, unique in that you don't have any bass. We've got thousands of acres here, and yeah. I don't know of another spot in, in yeah. the Midwest that's really, we've got walleyes, northern pike. Tell us about yeah. the fish. We have walleye, northern pike, yellow perch, white bass, black crappie, and if you want to say we have a trash fish, I don't like that word because there's no such thing, but we have some white suckers, which would be the only species that anyone might call undesirable. Uh, anytime you set the hook, it's probably a fish that you're going to put in your live well and, and put on your table to eat dinner later on. And I don't know any other lake I fish. And you guys know I travel the country, the Mississippi River, yep. the Great Lakes. You've got your sheephead and carp and catfish and all these other species that people might think are less than desirable. You don't have that here, which is very unique. Yeah, and, and we talked, uh, you know, with, with the water coming up, and you, you drive around, you know, there you can drive in, open up the barn door, drive in that, and other things. But, um, you know, we talked about at what level would this lake have to get before it would actually run out. So explain a little bit about that. Yeah, at 1,458 feet above mean sea level is when the Devil's Lake watershed would overflow into another watershed. Uh, I guess that's what people would say the lake would flow out of its banks. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would connect the Devil's Lake Basin with the Red River Basin, uh, and then all the water would eventually flow north through the, the Red River of the north into the Winnipeg River and all the Lake Winnipeg, and then who knows, Hudson Bay, I guess, is, yeah. is where it would end up. Uh, that's a lot of water, but a few years ago we were surprisingly close to that. We were three feet higher than we are now. As you look around, you can see the water line on the rocks where the water was quite higher. The bridge we're sitting next to, you couldn't get a boat under it. Really? Uh, because the water was so high. So it could happen. Uh, at the lake level now, every foot of water floods 10,000 acres of land. If that doesn't give you an idea of how flat the landscape has become now, one foot of water covers 10,000 acres of dirt. Well, what you mentioned apartment. earlier is it creates uh, spawning habitat. Correct. Which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, as an angler, I love to see the higher water. As a, a person that lives in the community and understands the, the fight of the surrounding citizenry of the lake, you don't want to see that. Uh, 10,000 acres of land is 10,000 acres of farmland, it's 10,000 acres of roads, it's homes, it's buildings, and uh, that's frustrating too. So finding that nice level where we have enough of that spawning habitat for the lake to remain healthy, but not so much that we're hurting other people's income, that's where we got to be, and we're getting to that. You know, this level where we're at right now, we've been plus or minus a foot for about two years now. Everybody seems to be getting along. The fish are healthy, as you've seen from what we catch today. Well, I hear a little bit of noise in this live well right here, folks. So, yeah, we've had fun this morning. But, Paul, you're going to agree. The hospitality here, when I you pull into town, you know, um, every hotel and most I'm, every resort, fish cleaning, bird cleaning, freezer, dog kennels, um, just for the outdoorsman, this is it. This is really paradise. We're here in uh, late September and early October, and uh, it's a great time to be here because the fields are full of ducks, the sky is full yeah. of geese, 
and uh, we're having some great fishing for walleyes here on the lake. And we need to remind people to stay with us because if you want to see a thousand mallards in the air, it's going to happen. So, <laughs> hey, Terry, Johnny, and Paul for Ultimate Outdoors Radio and for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. We're having some fun out here, and uh, stay with us. Thanks, Johnny, for taking us out today.